Hi, this is problem number 27 out of the textbook in chapter 10. The problem reads, uh, what is the likely identity of a metal if a sample has a mass of 63.5 grams when measured in air and an apparent mass of 55.4 grams when submerged in water? Um, the idea of apparent weight uh, has to do with the difference between its actual weight and the buoyant force. If I were to uh, sketch a free body diagram uh, of this particular problem, it would look something like this. So here's my uh, box, my object, the chunk of metal, if you will. Of course, it has a weight, uh, mg, which is going to be uh, larger uh, than this smaller buoyant force that I've drawn here in green. The apparent weight is going to be uh, this difference between the two. So, you know, I don't draw that on the free body diagram, but the difference between the two there is going to be this uh, weight apparent. Uh, of course, this is going to be the actual weight or the weight of the metal here uh, drawn in blue. So if I were to write this out in terms of a dynamics equation, I would get something that, uh, that looks like this. Uh, I could say that uh, uh, that the apparent weight, mg, uh, is equal to the difference between uh, the weight of the metal, mg submetal, uh, uh, minus the buoyant force. And we can see that kind of represented here in the free body diagram. And I should also recognize that uh, the buoyant force here can be described um, in other terms as well. We can say that it's uh, simply uh, the, the weight of the fluid displaced, in this case, water, uh, mg, or uh, I could write it in terms of uh, the mass of the water might be uh, the volume of the water times the density of the water. And this, of course, is from the relationship um, density is equal to mass over volume. Therefore, mass is equal to density times volume. So I've, I've just kind of substituted. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue here. I'm going to get uh, mg apparent, or the apparent weight, is equal to mg of the metal minus this expression for the buoyant force, which is going to be the volume of water displaced times the density of the water times g. We can see here that uh, g uh, drops out of this equation and um, I'm going to essentially uh, in my next maneuver I'm going to replace the volume uh, of the water displaced. Technically this is the same as the volume of the metal. Um, I'm going to replace that with the mass of the metal over the density of the metal. So let me go ahead and write this uh, next piece here. Uh, M apparent, or the apparent mass now, is equal to the mass of the metal minus the volume of the metal times the density of the water. Uh, continuing on, the apparent mass now is equal to the mass of the metal minus, uh, instead of the volume of the metal, I'm going to do mass of the metal over the density of the metal. Because these are known, uh, or at least the density of the metal is what I'm looking for. Uh, the mass of the metal is given to me in the problem. I don't know the volume of the metal, so I'm going to express it in terms of mass and density instead of volume. We see this maneuver quite a bit in fluids. Uh, times the density of water. Okay, so now at this point in the problem I should see that I'm basically looking for the density of the metal. So I have this uh, this expression and I need to rearrange it in order to solve for that. The first thing that I'm going to do is subtract the mass of the metal from both sides. So now I get the apparent mass minus the mass of the metal is equal to negative mass of the metal over density of the metal. 
uh, times the density of water. And uh, at this point, I'll go ahead and multiply both sides by negative 1. So I get mass of the metal minus mass apparent. I've simply multiplied that left side by negative 1. That cancels out the negative sign over here on the right-hand side, mass of the metal over uh, density of the metal. All of that times the density of water. Okay, so um, again, I'm going to continue this. Uh, oops. Uh, so in my next move, I'm still trying to solve for this piece here, the density of the metal. So um, I'm going to divide both sides by the density of water, and I get mass of the metal minus the apparent mass divided by uh, the density of water is equal to mass of the metal over density of the metal. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the reciprocal of uh, both sides here. So, uh, oops. so uh, that becomes density of the water over mass of the metal minus the apparent mass is equal to density of the metal over mass of the metal. And then so finally I'll multiply both sides by mass of the metal. M metal times the density of water over mass of the metal minus the apparent mass is equal to the density of the metal. Finally, after all that work, I'm now ready to uh, substitute. And so now I can say, all right, the mass of the metal in problem number 27 is given to me as 63.5, um, 63.5 grams. I'm going to multiply that. Um, I should convert it uh, to kilograms. Uh, so I'll get 0 0.0635 kilograms. Let me go ahead and just do that now. So I'll erase this and replace it with 0 0.0635 kilograms. Multiplying that by the density of water, uh, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And I'll divide all of that by the mass of the metal, which is 0 0.0635 kg minus the apparent mass, which is also given to me in problem 27, which is 55.4 grams, or 0 0.0554 kg, is equal to the density of the metal. Running all of that through, uh, I end up getting 7840, 7840 being, uh, sorry, kilograms per cubic meter, being the uh, density of this unknown metal and if you look up in table, and it even kind of prompts you to do that, see table 10.1, you could recognize that's either going to be uh, steel or iron. So uh, based, on, um, based on what we've seen over here, where 7840 kilograms per cubic meter is the density of the metal, that yields uh, steel or iron being as our uh, probable um, unknown materials.